Good day and welcome to STO Bricks Insight where we talk about what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Well on 27th of June 1954, exactly 70 years ago, the world's first nuclear power plant was launched. Now the plant in question was the renowned Obinsk nuclear power plant constructed in the Kaluga region which is 120 kilometers south of Moscow in what was then the Soviet Union or the part of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Now what were the key factors that led to the creation and structure of this station? Why is there sometimes a discrepancy between the perception of Soviet primacy and the United States in nuclear uh, energy and the reality? Plus, what is the significance of the development of this nuclear power plant for the global nuclear industry since then? Now, I'll answer all these questions, but first, please enjoy this short video. Now, following the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, it became evident that the United States would utilize a nuclear weapon against the USSR without hesitation. So the main objective for the USSR was developing the in developing the first nuclear reactors was to achieve the fastest possible completion, particularly for military applications, including having parity with the US in possession of nuclear weapons. Now the initial military and research reactors in both the USSR and the USA were not designed to produce electricity. Instead, they, were requir they required an external power supply due to the way they were constructed. I mean, a pilot uh, water-cooled uranium graphite reactor designated A1 was contracted in the Urals where the initial Soviet plutonium was produced. It should be noticed that the Anushka project was in fact a completely different design to the American plutonium producing reactors. And this refutes the usual myth peddled by the West that the USSR stole the entire atomic project from the United States right down to the design drawings. In particular, for the A1, Soviet engineers selected a layout option that differed radically from the American approach with vertical channels for uranium fuel and moderator. This version of the core layout was a radical innovation at the time, but subsequently served as the basis for almost all power reactors uh, that came afterwards. Now, by February 1949, the first batch of weapons-grade plutonium had been produced at the A1 and was ready for use. The beginning of August 1949, the USSR had actually produced its high-purity metallic plutonium. I mean, the first Soviet atomic bomb was detonated on 29th of August 1949 and that was just four years after the detonation of the bomb in Hiroshima. However, Russia had an urgent need for both a bomb and electricity that it could provide. The concept of utilising a military reactor for peaceful purposes was being discussed. Now, following the first test of the atomic bomb, the head of the Soviet atomic project, the Akimedition, Igor uh, Kurchatov, held meetings with Professor Nikolai Dozenhal, who was one of the designers of the Anushka project, along with Professor Savali and Feinberg, to discuss the possibility of creating a nuclear power plant. The proposal was to use the same Ural uh, Anushka experiment as the basis for this and the risk was significant because using military funds in an inappropriate manner on civilian development would be a bit of a problem. In those days the consequences could be more severe than just a prison sentence as this was Stalin's Soviet Union. Now, once the main characteristics of the nuclear power plant project had been established, uh, Kurchatov decided to present them personally to Joseph Stalin face to face. Many were surprised when Stalin gave his immediate and unequivocal support to the project. Now, the scientists who had previously carried out all the work on the nuclear power plant at their own risk and expense were now provided with all the levels of assistance that they were going to be needed to uh, to bring the project to fruition. So you could say that Stalin's face and the scientists gave birth to nuclear power as we know it today. Stalin then issued uh, in May 1949 a decree on the creation of the first nuclear power plant. Kurchatov was appointed scientific di director while Dozenhall was appointed chief designer of the reactor. The decree granted all the funding and assistance that was going to be needed to build the new nuclear plant. And in 1950, May, 
the USSR Council of Ministers adopted the resolution outlining the construction of three experimental reactors. A uranium graphite with a water cooling, a uranium graphite with gas cooling and a uranium beryllium with gas or liquid metal cooling. Now the original plan was for them to work in turn on a single steam turbine and a 5 megawatt generator. So this is how the initial concept for the Obninsk nuclear plant was established, which was then referred to as FIRST for confidentiality purposes. Now, the Western press has reported frequently that the first nuclear power plant was constructed in the United States by the United States as the first electric current from nuclear energy was generated in the US. However, well, that's full of bovine excrement. On December 20th, 1951, the American reactor EBR-1, Experimental Breeder Reactor, at the Argonne National Laboratory in Idaho produced its first electricity, enough to power four incandescent light bulbs. Yeah, four light bulbs. It's not exactly a power plant, is it? Four light bulbs. By the start of 1952, the electric power of the EBR-1 had increased to 2 kilowatts, which was sufficient to provide lighting for a building in which the installation itself was located. However, in comparison to modern standards, even that was a relatively small reactor with approximately 200 kilowatts of electricity, which is about uh, the size of a small backup diesel generator at a clinic. So it would be inaccurate to describe it as a fully-fledged nuclear plant as the task of connecting it to the power grid was not set up uh, at all. Plus, the American design was purely experimental, as, just as a science project rather than an industrial-scale project. The American scientists were actually fully aware of this, and unlike the media in the United States, didn't claim to be first in this matter. In fact, the, the priority EBR-1 was only later emphasised in the US when it became known that a real industrial uh, strength nuclear reactor, which had been connected to the power system uh, of the Soviet Union, was actually operational. So, the Obinsk uh, nuclear power plant demonstrated the primary trajectory that the new global nuclear energy industry has subsequently pursued. Now, you have to remember at that time, Americans viewed nuclear power as a distant prospect and something for the future. After all, the US was using all the cheap oil it had from the Texas, Oklahoma, California, plus the import they imported from the Arabian Peninsula. The prospect for nuclear energy were talked about in the US as something like for science fiction. Meanwhile, the Soviet's development turned out to be truly unique and revolutionary. Unlike the Soviet atomic bomb, the Soviet peaceful atomic project didn't contain any American ideas. I mean, the majority of the world's design concept for power reactors were established at the time. In total, three reactor layout options were proposed for the Obninsk and nuclear power plant. The first option was a beryllium moderated reactor, which was implemented in the USSR as a project with a lead bismuth cooling, uranium beryllium fuel and an intermediate neutron spectrum. This was the world's first development of a liquid metal cooled power reactor. Subsequent developments in this direction were used in experimental liquid metal power plants for the nuclear submarine fleet of the USSR and in the BN series reactors cooled with liquid sodium. The second idea was the creation of an extremely complex high temperature helium graphite reactor. That was a concept that was so far ahead of its time. I mean, the world is only now approaching the creation of such a reactor. The helium high temperature reactor is one of the planned types of the fourth generation units for construction in the next decade. I mean, following the study of helium graphite reactors, the USSR developed the first pressurised water cooled reactor, which became the forerunner of the main type of reactor uh, for submarines and the uh, Russian icebreakers, as well as the main type of reactor for the modern Russian nuclear power plants. The VVER, which is water cooled power reactor, once again the fundamental concept of modern light water reactors with two water cooled, was trialled for the first time in the world. I mean, the majority of modern nuclear power plant reactors now fall into that category. 
And finally, the original idea of water-cooled uranium graphite reactor was identified as the most advanced uh, one for practical implementation. And it was on this basis that the decision was made to construct a pilot unit for the first nuclear power plant. This resulted in the world's first single circuit channel uranium graphite reactor with water cooling being developed. And as I said, the nuclear power plant was constructed in uh, Obninsk near Moscow. The reactor was de designated AM1, the abbreviation AM was subsequently deciphered in two ways. The designation C atom or peaceful atom was subsequently applied. Now it's worth noting that the other two types of reactors from the design of the first nuclear power plant, the nuclear uh, <coughs> liquid metal coolant and pressurized water uh, were subsequently deployed as the atomic hearts of ships and submarines in the USSR Navy. However, the uranium graphite reactor, which commenced construction in uh, Obninsk, proved to be too bulky for transportation purposes. Consequently, the abbreviation was subsequently decoded in accordance with the second option. The construction of the nuclear power plant started in 1952 and on the site of what was a village called uh, Piatkino, and in 1926, uh, 1954, the Obinsk nuclear power plant became the first power plant in the world to start up a reactor. On that day, the head of the facility, uh, Dmitry Bolok himself, uh, recorded in his operational log that the process took 17 hours and 45 minutes and steam is supplied to the turbine. And the academics, Igor Kuchatov and Anatoly Alexandrov, who were present at the time, extended their congratulations to all the participants in this historic event with the phrase, let's have fun. The following day, the 27th of June, the station was connected to the USSR power grid. In addition to its role in energy generation, the nuclear power plant has also served as a basis for experimental research. These have included the production of isotope products, neutron physical research, and research into solid state physics. The reactors also provided a testing ground for new fuel elements, organic coolant, structural materials, internal control centers, and reactivity control tools. Now, for many years after its launch, the power plant served as a training ground for large numbers of personnel. The first two crews of nuclear submarines and the operators of the first nuclear icebreakers were actually trained there. The first units of the uh, Belirask and the Novo Novorozhne the nuclear plants were operated by personnel from the original training program, which did include specialists from Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Romania, the German Democratic Republic and China, as well as distinguished guests from around the world, including the first cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin. So, the operation of the first nuclear power plant demonstrated the viability of industrial scale electric generation from nuclear finish. So the plant's half century of accident-free operation has pro provided a compelling case for global development of nuclear power. I mean, the plant operated in the general network of the USSR and then in the Russian Federation for almost 50 years. The station was actually decommissioned in April 2002. The facility is currently operational as a research centre, memorial and a museum complex serving as a tangible testament to the remarkable achievements of the Russian uh, scientific community and their unwavering commitment to progress. Now, I've made a number of videos highlighting the Russian nuclear sector, so do go and have a look at those too. Uh, I'm sure you'll find those interested, particularly on small-scale nuclear power plants that Russia is developing, uh, as well as what they're doing in other parts of the world, like uh, Hungary, Turkey, Bangladesh and Egypt. Now, thanks for watching and please like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website seobricksinsight.com by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. Thank you and I'll see you all again soon.